In this movie, we're going to be taking a look at the run to UAV process and kind of the backbone uh, behind the Imagine UAV uh, workflow used in the spatial model that you see here, the spatial model interface. So if we were to click on the actual uh, view model button available with the UAV uh, ribbon interface, this model comes up by default, which can be altered accordingly. Um, obviously, we can just move uh, pieces around as we see fit, uh, just to make them fit in the window, or we can, you know, scroll in and out to uh, make adjustments also. If you wanted to uh, deselect or turn off certain parts of the model, uh, it's very easy to do that just by highlighting uh, the areas and hitting delete, as you can see here. So now we have a, a workflow uh, for um, running just the LAS process. We can change some compute surface inputs and compute orientation inputs uh, just so that things run a little quicker. I like to do that to uh, do a little test sample and then um, just specifying the input project directory uh, on this create project parameters and by default it, it selects the JPEG and EXIF uh, file formats used in the, uh, for running the process. And the other thing we have to kind of do is fill in the output name for the, in this case, last file that we're going to create as opposed to Mosaic and DTM. And we have to specify the EPSG code, of course, for the projection to be in the right place uh, for the imagery that we're working with. And with that, we can, um, we can run this process if we wanted to. We can make a few changes to uh, some, some of the orientation parameters if we need to in here, or we can add on other additional features if we need to. It's very easy to add on pieces to this operator, like if I were to choose a point cloud input, in this case just to kind of preview the output, I would uh, load in the preview option operator so that when I run the preview button, it will actually produce uh, a previewed output uh, file. Uh, it won't actually produce a file, it's just a, a temporary file that's previewed in the window. If I wanted to actually produce an output file, I would specify uh, an actual uh, point cloud output. Uh, and uh, use the run process and the file naming convention is in place. So here you see the previewed output. With just a preview option, we can click on the preview tab and look at a few things that the preview provided us with, like in this case changing the, the color by elevation, just changing the elevation colors around, uh, but you're somewhat limited to what you can view with the preview options. I also have a project file for this data set that we can view uh, at the same time just to kind of overlap and, and take a look at uh, how the project uh, can be manipulated and work with this uh, point cloud data as well in addition to the spatial modeling environment. Um, so here we have the project on the bottom left viewer there and we can just kind of look at some of the point measurement options that we have or I can run some APM uh, from, uh, from the project itself and get a uh, a tie point summary and from that we can actually triangulate our, our block file which is this is kind of a brief introduction into um, photogrammetry on the, the triangulation side and here you can see the result in 2.1 RMSC is a little high I like to keep it closer to one or less and uh, I'm just going to remove a couple of these uh, high RMSC points just by using a sort command and going to in this case the bottom of the list and, and deselecting those poor points. You can actually do this in you know, kind of batch mode or criteria selection mode to get more points a little quicker. But and then we just rerun triangulation just by removing a few. I'm already down to 1.7 uh, without too much effort. So accepting that triangulation allows me to then view things in say a stereo analyst for imagined environment like we see here. And we can quickly QAQC, uh, kind of the stereo environment. In this case, anaglyph mode. Uh, we do support uh, true color uh, stereo viewing, uh, of course, um, as well. So we can get uh, height measurements of the, the stockpiles there, the, the tailings if we wanted to. Going back to the spatial modeling environment, you can see we can uh, make changes to that spatial model. Here we have a, a model that uh, we're just going to add a point cloud input to and we're going to kind of figure out how we can do some point cloud volumetrics. So 
by specifying point cloud input into the point cloud volume tool. We just need to satisfy a few criteria in order to run the uh, point cloud volume. So if we configure uh, the operator, the point cloud volume operator, it's looking for either a shapefile, an AOI of the area you want to get a volume for, uh, or the bounding box for that file. So uh, you just have to specify what your output file prefix is and what your bounding file is. Here you see uh, a small area in the middle of the imagery that we're going to use uh, a basically a clip uh, zone for that mid tailings area. I say mid because it's the middle of the of those three tailings piles. So specify an output and um, hit OK, and those uh, criteria are now satisfied. At this point, we're almost ready to run the model. Uh, we just want to verify that we have all the things in place, everything's connected. We have some different uh, preview and run options that we can go through. Uh, we want to just make sure uh, that we want to run it this time as opposed to previewing it. We can do this by running in batch mode or running in the background, so it's running behind the scenes. Uh, but either way, it'll pr be producing a file this time. So uh, if we first need to uh, make sure that we have uh, everything set up. So if we wanted to, we can run just a certain portion of the model, and it'll kind of stop at that spot. And by doing that, it's actually creating uh, a last export uh, by uh, that being the stopping point. So as you can see, it's gone through and done the project creation, compute orientation, and compute surface uh, to finally produce that uh, last low resolution dot last file. At this point in the model, we can load the results into a viewer here and kind of view the actual file, uh, the point cloud layer, in, in a 3D viewer, 2D viewer, and uh, do some edits to it. So load the, the point cloud. As you can see, when you zoom in, it decimates it a little bit. And if we select a certain uh, rectangular area to ensure we're only uh, viewing the middle tailing section on a cross-sectional view, you can see the front and side view there, we're actually seeing that, that tailings area uh, cross-sectional view. So by doing a selection by polygon, we can just define an area of those points that we want to select and just simply delete, or we may, may want to reclassify or offset. If we close these windows out, we can actually run through the, the full model and get the, the volume results, which we can view here in 2D Viewer. Uh, just by loading, you know, so a base map like uh, the mosaic file or the the DSM file that were created from uh, the, the process. So let's load the DSM first. There's grayscale, not a lot of uh, variation in that. It might be better loaded as painted relief, but you can also load the mosaic file. This is what we're more interested in, so we can see where that shape file overlays. And by now specifying a uh, shape file, I'm going to go to my recent directory here and just grab the, the shape file that was created kind of in the background and it populates this recent directory so I don't have to go looking around for it too much. Uh, I'm just going to make sure I grab the right one and there you see the, the shape file by selecting on it and viewing the table of the attribute table you can see that uh, it has a 893.4 cubic meter uh, result from that uh, spatial model run. Let's close out this project viewer for a second. I'll look at a few other things here. So um, here we have the mosaic with the with the shape file output on top as you can see here in the 2D viewer. You can also link files or uh, what I like to do is add a view but I like to add my create 2D view to my workflow tab or my quick access panel in this case. So I always have access to a, a 2D viewer very easily uh, and easy to access. So if I want to open a, a point cloud layer, let's open up the high resolution uh, output and you might see right away that the, the output uh, file for this is, has quite the higher fidelity in it and uh, the point spacing in it which is really really quite nice to work with. If we view that in a 3D viewer, uh, environment, I should say, we can kind of zoom in and kind of look around and see the actual um, uh, tailings or the, the mounds uh, that are in question that we're getting the volume metrics from. So in this case you see the, 
the middle pile there. We're kind of circling around it. Uh, depending on the file size and if you have levels of detail uh, created for these layers, um, sometimes it can be a little slower and depending on your on your processor it, it can be, but for the most part even the largest of files with uh, millions and billions of points even um, move around uh, really quite seamlessly considering all the information that's it's chugging through. Again, it's dependent on your, your video card and, and those kind of applications that you're using. So hopefully that gives you a good idea how to work with the, the spatial modeling environment, the background scenes of the Imagine UAV uh, add-on to Essentials Advantage or professional level of Imagine, the professional being the modeling application that you can edit. And it gives you a good idea how to view and work uh, with uh, UAV imagery in a 3D and 2D environment. Thanks for your time.